Hey, what's up you guys? It's Caboose bringing you another Marvel's Avengers video and today what I got for you guys here is a bit of a special video. I've had the chance to play the Marvel's Avengers beta early and I'm going to be giving you guys my hands-on impressions on everything. We're going to talk about what I really liked, what I kind of liked, what didn't work for me, and what I'm a little worried about. Before we get into everything though, I wanted to ask you guys, of course, if at any point you enjoy this video, if you could consider leaving a like rating on it, it would show your support and I would really appreciate it. So if you enjoy the video at any point, leaving a like rating would be awesome. And I wanted to give a very special thanks to the folks over at Square Enix for providing me a beta code for Marvel's Avengers and allow me early access with that beta. Unfortunately, I am not able to show you any of the content that I recorded specifically, but you'll see more on that soon. I mean, the beta itself is going to be available in just a couple of days. So thanks again to Square Enix for the beta code and the early access with the beta. And with all that said, let's jump into my thoughts on everything. First things first, when you boot up this beta, you're going to be playing through a day and a couple of additional story missions from the reassemble campaign that we will see when this game launches on september 4th and i don't want to talk too much about a day because i'm sure you've all heard enough about a day but i do want to mention that this is my third time playing this demo and each time i've played it it is a ton of fun. I got to play A-Day for the first time at PAX West last year, and then later in the year at EGX, I was able to try it again, as well as one of the harm room challenges with Miss Marvel. And every time, like I said, I've played A-Day, it's a blast. You get to play as all the core Avengers outside of, of course, Kamala Khan, because she hasn't been introduced to the team at that point, And you get a feel for how the combat is like for each of those characters. And while I would love to see what everyone else thinks, I will say for myself, Thor's hammer and the impact from that hammer when you're hitting enemies, it feels the best it has in every chance I got to play this demo. I know that was one of the kind of nitpicks, but also genuine complaints that people had when they got to see that once an Avenger mission way back at the June War table. And rest assured, at least in my opinion, and at least with A-Day, that Thor's hammer and his combat Feels great. Also, Captain America is awesome. I can't wait to main this character until Hawkeye releases and then I'm gonna main Hawkeye and then Spider-Man will release and then I'm gonna main Spider-Man. Moving on though, after A-Day, then you get to play some additional story missions that we haven't yet seen before. And not all the story missions presented within this beta are in chronological order in how you're gonna play them when the full game launches. So the first mission that you get to try out after A-Day is not actually going to be the mission that follows A-Day in the launch of the game. There's a time jump, you're playing as Bruce Banner, you're with Kamala Khan, Bruce turns into Hulk, and you do Hulk things. And I gotta say, I was pretty intrigued by the narrative. I like the actors that are portraying these characters. I mean, Troy Baker, that dude is master class in voice acting, and he does a great job with Bruce Banner, as does Sandra Saad as Kamala Khan. I think she's great. I know a lot of people have their opinions about that character being the protagonist, but honestly, based on what I was getting to play in that beta, it's working for me. And although I've had the chance to play as Miss Marvel before, and I've already talked about my thoughts on the character in this game before, I will once again reiterate that she is a really fun character, and and you guys are seriously going to be surprised when you get your hands on this beta about how much fun you're going to have with Miss Marvel. One thing that wasn't working too well for me though was that there were a couple of confined areas when you're playing as the Hulk through those story missions and I just don't feel like it works. The character needs a little bit of freedom, he needs some jump space, and when you realize how much of the screen Hulk takes up, the environment needs to reflect that. So when you're in these tight rooms and there isn't too much of a destructible environment, I'm not feeling enough of that power fantasy that I do in something like the A-Day demo, or even that I do when I'm playing as Hulk during the Warzone missions. We'll get to that later, but when you have that open space to just free roam around and throw and toss people away, it's great. But okay, after you play through all those story missions, then you got the harm challenges available for you to try out, and that's where you kind of have the freedom to play as all the different heroes that are available in the beta. You got Iron Man, Black Widow, Hulk, and of course, Kamala Khan, Miss Marvel. Before I give you my thoughts on that though, I do want to let you guys know real quick that story missions are not replayable within the Marvel's Avengers beta. The only way that you can replay story missions is if you wipe your save for the beta. So if you want to play those story missions over and over again, or you just want to replay them one time at least to see if there was anything you may have missed, then either wait for the open beta the following week so then you can play it on a different account, or 
reset your save before you put any progress into leveling your characters and unlocking or obtaining gear for them. And with that out of the way, I now wanted to transition my thoughts overall into what I think about the four playable characters in this beta. And for me, the one I ended up putting the most time into was Iron Man. I felt that this was the most effective character when it came to traversal. When you're in some of those wide open war zone missions and you got a lot of room to free roam, he is the character that you want to be playing as in all honesty. I think that you can still have a bit of enjoyment out of doing that with Hulk or Kamala Khan, not so much with Black Widow, but overall when you're playing as Iron Man and you're flying around, it's a blast. It's also really cool when you can go through his skill tree and unlock some of the different weapons he has. You know, he's got lasers, he's got rockets. You can switch between that and his repulsor blasts in the middle of combat and it starts to feel fluid. You kind of get the opportunity to play as a support hero if you're flying around in battle using the lasers because they have lock-on capability and you can just hit that right trigger and just lock onto enemies and do that damage over time to them while you're flying around, while your teammates are on the ground taking them down as well. Or if you're not a fan of staying in the air the whole time, well, you can drop to the ground, fight those enemies up close and personal, use those rockets for crazy damage, or mix combos together with the Repulsor Blast to stun enemies and get good hits in. Once you get the hang of everything, and once you start to understand exactly how the combat works in Marvel's Avengers, it starts to feel fluid and you'll start having some fun. I think the character this works the best for, at least in the beta, is Black Widow. She has some of the most fluid combat and her ultimate gives you some real power and lets you mow down enemies with ease and you can unlock some different weapons for her as well she's got these machine pistols or just normal pistols or even like a revolver pistol that does a ton of damage it's pretty cool and then of course there's miss marvel i've already talked about that you know my thoughts on that character she's a blast to play as and I think the same does go for Hulk. When you start to upgrade him a little more and you can get a little bit of variety in some of his abilities, then you can start to get a bit of the feel of that brute strength that he has to offer. That being said though, you can kind of get the best of both worlds if you play as Iron Man because that brute strength feel definitely comes from the Hulk Buster. I didn't get sick of it once. Every time I called in that Hulk Buster, I had a blast with the gameplay. But okay, I talked about all these characters individually. Now let's talk about them as a unit. In specific, when it comes to playing co-op after you complete those story missions you're gonna open up the war table and you're gonna have the ability to jump online and play war zones or drop zones with either random people that you'll find through the matchmaking or some of the friends that you might have jumping on the beta as well this weekend and this part of the game is a little hard to gauge for me because on one hand playing with your friends being on the mic communicating with everybody or even just being in a lobby with people who know what they're doing and have a control in their hands and are not just AI can be a lot of fun. You could be playing one of the bigger open area war zone missions and have Hulk on one side of the map doing an objective and you on the other side doing another. Or you can regroup with your squad and just mow down enemies together and some of it can be fun, some of it can be a little too hectic, but I feel like all of this is stuff where when you get your hands on the full game and you're playing with a consistent unit, then you're gonna get that team synergy going and you're gonna understand, okay, Hulk's attacking this guy, I'm going to leave him alone, and I'm going to go after this other enemy. And the same might apply for your other two teammates. But when it's like all four of your heroes just dogpiling one enemy, it gets a little too much sometimes. I definitely did notice though sometimes there was some frame drops with the gameplay. When you're playing through this one mission in the beta known as a villain sector, there's a part of the mission in which a ton of enemies are on screen at once. And having replayed that mission a couple of times, I noticed pretty consistently that when there were that many enemies, the frames were dropping. I feel like though this is something that can be easily fixed in time for the launch of the game. We still got a month so they could fix this if they wanted to by reducing the amount of enemies coming your way or just by continuing to polish the game. I'm hoping by launch I'm not going to experience any frame drops like the ones I experienced within the beta. But yeah, as a general note, playing Warzone missions, they're a lot of fun when you're playing them in co-op. Playing them by yourself with the AI companions, not so much, but I feel like you could still get some enjoyment out of them. Some of the drop zone missions are very short and I guess that's the point of them but they all just feel a little samey and they don't feel too varied and unique from one another and I also noticed that a lot of the interiors in just about every mission that you're going inside somewhere all looks very similar it's just aim facilities non-stop so fingers crossed that when we get our hands on the full game that there's quite a bit of variety of the exterior and interior environments for some of these missions there was one mission I didn't get to try out through the early access beta and you may have seen it in the latest war table where it was like this city at night it wasn't available for the early access. It will be available 
for the beta coming up, so I can't wait to try out that mission. But in general, when you get to experience the more wide open, more free roamable Warzone missions, it's a lot of fun. But okay, to recap, the story seems pretty compelling so far from some of the missions that I've gotten to try out. I hope it stays on this course, as the story is the one thing for me that I want to work the most within Marvel's Avengers, as all the other elements to this game, including the thing that I'm about to mention, which is one of my biggest concerns for Marvel's Avengers, are things that can be improved upon based on player feedback. With the story though, you only get that one shot for it to be good, so I hope that it is good, and based on what I've gotten to play, I was pretty intrigued. Some of the Warzone missions seem a little samey. Some of them do give you quite a bit of opportunity to free roam and just have some freedom overall within what you want to do, and the characters for the most part are quite a bit of fun. Now with all that being said, I want to get into one of my biggest concerns about the Marvel's Avengers beta, and I actually do respect Square Enix for putting this in the beta because they're clearly not trying to hide anything. And that pertains to the in-game marketplace that's available in the beta to look at, in which you can also buy stuff through not with real money but when the full game does come out will be something that you will have to use real money to buy skins from well skins emotes nameplates all that stuff just nothing but cosmetics yes but still some cool looking cosmetics i'm not just yet gonna slam my hand on the big red emergency button because i don't know what it's gonna be like in terms of earning suits with the main game Crystal Dynamics has said that we can earn alternate suits in Marvel's Avengers, stuff that will be available, free to earn, and not something that'll be locked behind a paywall. But there are some things that are locked behind a paywall, and I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to feel about it. And I feel like the biggest factor in terms of how I'll feel about it in the end is how much they're going to cost. But I'll tell you the one thing that definitely concerns me is that each character in Marvel's Avengers has this thing known as a challenge card. And the challenge card in Marvel's Avengers is something akin to what you may know from other games known as a battle pass. To progress through these challenge cards, you have to complete, well, challenges. There will be daily challenges and there will also be weekly challenges. These give you points that get you through the tiers. And in each character's challenge card, you'll find alternate suits, you'll find resources that help you upgrade your gear, and you'll also find some of the in-game currency which can't be used but in the full game will be used at vendors to buy alternate suits, and this is the in-game currency, not the paid one, but there is also the paid currency in the challenge cards as well. Another key thing that I notice is that you can buy through the tiers of these challenge cards with that paid currency. And while even in the limited amount of time that I had with the early access beta for Marvel's Avengers, I progressed quite a bit through Iron Man's challenge card, I know that there are going to be people out there that are compelled to buy through the tiers because there are people out there that do the same when it comes to other games that have this sort of system. So I'm just worried that this is another avenue that allows people to spend their actual money on this game on top of already just buying the game itself and I'm not entirely sure how people are going to feel about it. To play devil's advocate though, to give the benefit of the doubt to Square Enix and Crystal Dynamics, they are providing us all the DLC for Marvel's Avengers for free. New heroes, new regions, new story missions, all that stuff free of charge. It needs to be funded somehow. So I don't know. It's a bit of a dilemma, and I guess I'm wondering what you guys are going to think of it when you get your hands on the beta, and overall what the general consensus will be in the community. But that just about wraps up this lengthy video of my hands-on thoughts with the Marvel's Avengers beta. Thank you to everybody who stuck around to hear everything. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy, if you could consider leaving a like rating on the video, it would show your support, and I would really appreciate it. Again, a thank you to Square Enix for providing me the beta code for Marvel's Avengers and allowing me early access with the beta so I can give my thoughts to you guys. I'm Caboose, and you can click on screen to make your way to one of the other videos on the channel, or you can click my logo to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Those links are going to be in the description. Drop a like if you enjoyed, leave a comment if you have an opinion, and subscribe if you're new. See you guys later.